Welcome to our lecture online. In more complex circuits, we could have transfer functions that have values that are greater than 1 and less than 0. We have gains in certain circuits that go well beyond the 1 and well below the negative numbers, and that means that in some cases, the gain or the transfer function will be 0. So we need to take that into account, and here we have kind of a graphic representation of that, that there may be different frequencies, because this would be as a function of frequency. We can see that in this case, there's a zero here, and there's a zero transfer there. In other words, the output relative to the input will be zero to whatever the input was. And because of that, we see that there's some cases where the transfer function will be zero, and those special cases, we call those zeros. Hmm, that's an interesting name. We call it zero because the transfer function is zero. Hmm. Now, as an example, we could have a transfer function that indicates the output current to the input current. Now, later on, we'll, we'll show you what that circuit looks like, but let's, let's say for a moment that this is what the equation looks like. That's the output over the input current. Now, are there some specific values of, in, of omega that can make the numerator equal to zero? Because if the numerator equals zero, then the transfer function equals zero. And indeed, since we have a product of j omega times 2 plus j omega, we can see then that the transfer function will be equal to zero when j omega is equal to zero, or when the quantity 2 plus j omega equals zero, which means when j omega equals zero, the transfer function is zero, and if we solve this for j omega, we can see that j omega in this case will be negative 2. We can actually solve this for omega, so in this case, of course, omega is 0. In this case, omega will be minus 2 divided by j. If we then multiply both the numerator and the denominator by j, then we have a minus 1 in the denominator. In the numerator, we have a minus 2j, or omega can be written as 2j. Later on, we'll show you what the actual meaning of all that is, but for now, we'll just leave it like that. It's just good to realize then that there's going to be cases where the output current will be equal to zero. That will be when the numerator is equal to zero. And in this case, when j omega is equal to zero or when j omega is equal to negative two, that's when the output current in this particular example will be equal to zero. And so those locations on the frequency uh, axis, so to speak, will then be considered zeros for those specific specific frequencies. And later on, we'll show you some examples that will clarify that. But at least at this point, all you need to realize that yes, there'll be certain frequencies for which the response, for which the transfer function will equal zero, which means whatever makes the numerator of this transfer function zero, that will then be called the zeros, the locations on the transfer, on the uh, frequency axis where the frequency response will be or where the transfer function will be equal to zero and that is how we know.